Well, hi everybody. It's the OnePlus 3 right here in my hand. This thing is sleek, $399 out of the box. Does it actually kill all the flagships? How many corners have been cut? Stay tuned and all that stuff. The size on this is 152.7 by 74.7 by 7.35 millimeters, weighs 5.57 ounces or 158 grams, and they've given us all these nice backs that you can choose from. Uh, you, know, you can buy the different wood ones, three different types of wood ones. Uh, then we've got this one, which is very similar to the OnePlus One, sort of a gritty texture that I like, and I'm using this one. And then we also have sort of a carbon fiber styled one. This is made out of anodized aluminum, and there's going to be, uh, I guess this, the, this color here is graphite. There's going to be a soft gold color coming out pretty soon. As for the uh, CPU in this thing, we've got the, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 820, and that's the same thing. It's running at 2.2 gigahertz, same thing that they're using in the S7. So you're not going to find much of a faster phone than this. Um, also, the GPU is the, the Arduino uh, 530, and uh, you guys can see here the benchmarks on the screen. I've got an LG G4. It just blows that thing out of the water. The GPU is fast enough that they are able to do some VR stuff. They gave us this. They've, they've uh, worked together with Loop VR, put together this VR headset, and they've got a demo that actually looks pretty impressive. I was, uh, I've, I've never actually played around with uh, um, VR much on uh, a phone, and this display is 1080p, so mm, probably not the best thing for VR, but it actually looked pretty good using their headset. Now, the main thing for me about this is um, that it has six gigabytes of memory, six, I mean, of RAM, so there's no other phone out there that I can think of that has that much memory, so you can have tons of stuff going on and not experience the slowdown like you would with a lot of other phones when you have lots of apps going in the background, and you're like, why is my phone so slow? Well, this one is not gonna do that. It's just gonna keep working uh, because of all the extra RAM. 64 gigabytes of um, storage on this. You can also get a smaller version. They don't have the 16 gigabyte version available anymore. That's just crap. And no one wanted it, so it's gone. 64 gigabytes uh, for our audience, I think, is the only way to go, uh, especially because this does not have SD card. Why can't I have everything? Make me angry sometimes, but no SD card, no micro SD. Nope, nope, nope. But 64 gigabytes is not bad. A USB 2 Type C connector on the bottom, and uh, thanks for the Type C. Wish it was USB 3, but the USB is using universal flash storage, which is way faster um, than just standard, you know, USB 2. So that's that's nice. They say three times faster, and that's what about what it feels like. All right, let's look at the actual device here. You can see it's extremely thin, like ridiculously thin. 7.35 millimeters thin to be exact. And also the bezel on this is microscopic. <laughs> you can see it without a microscope. But it's one of the smallest bezels in the industry right there. Hey, there you go. And then the screen's 5.5 inch MOLED. Yeah. Now they've upgraded from the old IPS and all that sort of thing. And I think the display looks really good. I've seen pe some people griping online being like, oh, it's not enough. I don't know if something's wrong with it. The only thing I really have to, to complain about, the blacks look really nice. You, you can change the, the color temperature and software here, which is nice of them to do. So you can, if it's some people say, it's too blue, it's too orange. You just go in and change the color temperature, whatever you want. Um, and the blacks are really, really nice because, you know, with an uh, OLED, they could just, the pixel just turns off and it's black. Uh, whites are nice. Outdoors, it's not bright it's just not bright enough i'm sorry like uh, most flagship phones are way brighter than this outdoors so also right here on the uh, the front we have a fingerprint you know scanner right there and hardware buttons yes hardware buttons thank you so much i really like hardware buttons you can go and turn them into software buttons if you want over here on the side we have this uh, little switch and that will change between your different notification settings like you want to only receive important updates or you only want to receive or you want to receive no you know notifications or whatever or you want to receive all notifications and you have your phone vibrate and make noise and all that sort of thing. You just throw a little switch over here. I guess we needed a switch for that. That's something that's built into the Android OS. So whatever, it's there. On the other side here, we've got our power button. And also we have a little spot there that pops out and we have dual nano SIM on this one. So dual SIM, very nice. No micro SD, eh, kind of sucky. Let's take a look at the software that comes on here. This is Oxygen, guys, and it's the best implementation of Oxygen thus far, Android 6.0. And I've already installed a bunch of stuff on here, just so you can see. It, it default uh, installs all the apps to the main screen. The main thing I'm gonna be looking at here is just what we get with our OS. Yeah, there we go. Cast, which is nice. So you can cast it to your, uh, your monitor or whatever. So you guys can pretty much see everything that's on here. So let's go ahead and check out the uh, different settings here. Standard stuff all in here. 
So in gestures here, you guys can see we're pretty much on the on the screen. I like the music control quite a bit. That's nice. Um, I mean, ultimately, I'm going to be using a different launcher, but you know, whatever. Customization. This is a very nice feature. You can change the LED and status stuff for basically everything. But dark mode. Of course, I'm going to enable dark mode. This is Tech Syndicate. There we go. And you can pick your accent color there and of anything. That's kind of cool. Get out of here. Oh, yeah, I gotta go back. Here, I'll just scroll through so you guys can see everything. Not really too much else to show about it. It's a very vanilla installation of Android, which I like. And here's the launcher that I'm going to be using. Just more options as far as your grid and stuff goes. I haven't really played with it much yet, but I've got a couple of launchers on there right now just so I can show you what's going on. All right, so they've switched back to a Sony sensor. We've got the IMX298, 16 megapixels here. On the other side, we have an 8 megapixel camera with smile detection. Hey, everybody, I'm so happy. Snapped a picture. Did you see that? No, you didn't. I love the music. Keep going. They're going to copyright claim me, are they? These sunglasses just appeared on my head. I turned off this weird noise. And the autofocus is now like a phase shift thing. It's not the laser that we used to have. Aperture is 2.0. They switch now switching back to a Sony sensor is usually going to give you better low light performance. They've got some noise reduction technology built into this called dynamic denoising, which is nice. They've got uh, HD mode, which kind of makes things look a little sharp and weird, so I don't use it. Uh, auto HDR, you can turn HDR on and off, or you can just leave it on auto and it'll detect, oh, I can actually make the dynamic range a little better here. I kind of leave it on auto and just see what it does, but you can turn that off as well if you like. And uh, then on top of that, we have two different types of stabilization. We have um, optical image stabilization in here. There's a floating element here. How's it going? But there also is the, the software image stabilization. And one thing that they do, instead of uh, bumping up the ISO really high when you're in the software using their camera software, a lot of times they'll let you shoot at a very low shutter speed, but they'll use the optical image stabilization, and that makes the shutter feel a little clunky sometimes. I much prefer to shoot in manual mode, but even then it's kind of strange. Sometimes if you set your own shutter and set your own aperture, you press the, the, the capture button, it's like it takes it a second. It's very strange. So in bright light conditions, it's always really snappy. It snaps very quickly, focuses very quickly. It even focuses pretty quickly in low light scenarios. So there's that. As far as the depth of field that you're going to get with this and making it look all pretty and, and, and you know, like professional and whatnot, the, the nice bokeh in the background, very minimal because they're using a tiny sensor. It's actually smaller than the last sensor, even though it's higher megapixels, 16 megapixel, but it's smaller. You do have an aperture of f2, but this is not going to be the same as an aperture of f2 on a regular, you know, might even a micro four thirds or, you know, um, four thirds camera or even, you know, a full frame sensor, of course. But the bigger the sensor, the better the background blur you get. But it does do a really good job of producing some nice pictures. And we have raw image support with this, so that's nice. As far as the video modes go, well, you've got uh, 720p at 120 FPS, so that's for your slow-mo and stuff, and you've got your 1080p, and then you also have 4K uh, UHD, and that one is a bit weird because it only does 30 FPS. If you want to do more than that, that's not really built into the software. There's manual controls, but you can't really change the shutter. The no EV controls that I can tell yet, so I think the manual mode is there. The, the main thing for me is that it allows you to do manual focus, so that's really nice. And you kind of need that if you're doing video in lower lighting because the focus just keeps seeking over and over. Like you're trying to, trying to you know, get some video of this freaking fish here, and it just keeps focusing over and over again. And it was pretty dark in there, and it's doing a nice job of making the scene look brighter than it really was. But you have to put it on manual focus in a lot of the darker situations or it's just going to keep seeking and drive you insane. As far as the overall quality of the, uh, the camera and the video and that sort of thing, um, I found it to be pretty good. Maybe not as good as some of the other big flagship phones out there. I'm not even as good as my LG G4, in my opinion. It just uh, there's a little bit more edge detail in the G4, um, and also the the optical stabilization. Even when you're doing video, if you start moving around a lot, it tends to try to overcompensate and it makes things look a little. It's trying to smooth out your movements, but if you move around really fast, you can get ahead of it, and it kind of jerks around a little bit. So the op uh, the optical image stabilization with their software needs to chill the hell, just chill the hell out, just freaking chill. Um, I'm using Cinema F uh, V5 because it can support 24 FPS and you can change a few things, and that's nice. Um, also, the bit rate on this is only around the 40, 40 41, um, so that's a little low compared to some of the other ones on the industry, but it's not terrible, you know, but just not quite as good as, um, it's, it's not enough to make me like do a backflip, but hey, it's better than an iPhone in my opinion. It does look better than an iPhone. Just some of the high-end Android phones have such a nice camera and, su and such nice video settings. So this one's up there. I'm waiting for some updates from them as far as their camera software goes to support better FPS, more manual controls, and maybe 
tame down this freaking optical image stabilization and then I think this would be really nice and uh, I'm already going to switch this and be using this as my daily driver but if I'm going to be doing video I probably won't be too excited about using this. They also added uh, NFC to this device. If you're missing that from the last few devices, hey, here it is. Okay, the other thing I want to talk about is Dash Charge, which is their new technology that they made up because I guess they didn't want to use anyone else's technology that's basically the same thing, but it, it allows you to charge your phone from zero to 30, per, I mean, zero to 60% in about 30 minutes. And you can do so even while gaming because a lot of the stuff is done in the actual plug unit or the actual wall charger instead of being done on the phone. So a lot of the, you know, whatever, I don't know, divvying up the, the power and that sort of thing. So you're able to reduce your heat and therefore charge this thing really freaking fast. Now, this is only going to be guaranteed to work with their stuff. you got to have their wall charger and their cable. Yeah, you're going to get nickel and dime for those things and you have to use theirs. And I'm not sure how I feel about that because I like to be able to go out and buy whatever I want. But you know what? They're not making an extreme amount on this phone because the price is nice and low for the, for the features that you get. Like I said, this, there's no other phone that I, that I know of that has 6 gigabytes of, of RAM. So that's industry leading right there. Um, maybe, maybe not industry leading in all the way across the board, but for the money, it's just a lot. So you go out and buy another wall charger or whatever. So you guys saw all the weird pictures I put on here. If you guys want to see this compared to some other you know, different cameras out there. Let me know. Maybe we can do a test uh, side by side. So I put this phone against the LG G4 Ran N22 and also 3D Mark, and it just destroys it because of the 3D processor. Um, the overall like uh, processing power is quite a bit higher, but the 3D processor in this is super fast. So here we have probably the best thing that you can hold in your hands for 400 bucks. Well, the best phone anyway. And um, yeah, I'll be using this one as my daily driver for a while. I love this back. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. Let me know if you're going to be getting one. Uh, also, no more freaking, uh, you know, in invitation codes and all this stuff. You can just go buy the damn thing like a regular phone. You can just go buy it. So that's really nice. Thank you very much, OnePlus, for making an awesome phone. Next time, you better have micro SD. I know 64 gigabytes, but micro SD. Do it for me, please. Just for me. Make me a special version. All right, guys. See you in the comments on the website. Be a taste better in a coffee mug with a tech syndicate logo. Why am I British? It's not even a British ale. It's not a Scottish ale either. And this is not a Scottish voice. This is a voice of someone satisfied from drinking beer from a coffee mug. Ah, it's f***ing delicious. <laughs>